Hi, Mrs. Kellogg here, and welcome back to my Art at Home video series. So today's lesson is drawing from the imagination. Now we're going to uh, be using our elements of art, line, shape, value, and optional is color. Um, so now I want you to look at some examples and hopefully they'll inspire you for this lesson. Okay, so I just want you to take a look up here. And remember, they don't have to look like anything. Um, we're just, if you notice, we're using line and shape to start with, and then we'll add that, the value in there. Um, so that's one example. There's another example. This is kind of turned into kind of like a sci-fi tree. So again, it could look like something. It doesn't have to. Um, and then this is one that I did that I was just connecting lines and shapes and uh, it turned into this bird with the wave in the background. Um, and here's another example. It's kind of abstract, but it kind of looks like a weird sci-fi fish too. Um, and then this one I did in color. Okay, and then if you notice, Again, I'm just using simple lines and shapes and connecting them. And then when I do use color, you know, I keep thinking of that idea of using a lighter color next to a darker color to make my shapes stand out. And then this one down here, um, I've been out in the garden a lot and um, you can kind of see from me probably looking at a lot of plants, that's in my head. and. It came out of my imagination drawing, and then um, I just had fun connecting those shapes again. And, you know, again, here's another example where you can just connect simple shapes. You just keep connecting them, and, you know, this is kind of fun because you could just leave it as an abstract where you're not sure what it is, or you could turn it into a building. Um, so use your imagination in this lesson and have lots of fun. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to my workspace and I'm going to tell you what materials you can use. Okay, so let's talk about the materials you're going to use for this project. Now, one thing you're going to need is your imagination. That's the most important. And again, it's drawing from the imagination, so you can use any materials that you have available to you. But two things you want to make sure to have is either newspaper or mat underneath the paper you're going to use. Okay, so you're definitely going to use paper. And um, I am going to use, in my project, a pencil. And then I'm going to use a fine tip and an ultra fine tip, Sharpie. Okay, so I'm just going to put these here. So this one is the ultra fine. And this one's the fine tip. So that ultra fine is ultra fine, super thin. Okay, and this is a little bit wider. So I am going to use those. Um, again, if you want to use color in this project, you can. So it's up to your imagination. Okay, so I'm going to let you get your materials. And then I will meet you back here and we'll get started. Did you get your materials? Great. Then let's get started. A lot of times I have students ask me, Mrs. Kellogg, how do I even start drawing from my imagination? I always draw from a picture um, to get my ideas. Well, it starts with those two really important elements of art. So that's how you want to start out. You're going to use your line, which will make your shapes and then we're going to overlap shapes meaning we're going to connect shapes okay so now the other thing to keep in mind um, I'm going to work going vertically so in art we call that a, a portrait format um, but if you want to work with your paper going horizontally which means across and in art we call that a landscape format um, it's up to you. So I'm going to start this way. 
And I'm going to use marker to start with. You can use pencil, that's fine. I'm just using marker just so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to start with a line. So you'll notice I kind of, I, I like these loose swooping lines. I try to just stay loose in the beginning. Okay, now I'm going to start to overlap, meaning I'm connecting those shapes. And I'm thinking ovals, triangles. So just keep in mind to relax. And the other thing is you might want to put on some music. It's kind of a fun thing to do. And just let your imagination do the work. So see how I'm taking those lines and then I'm turning them into shapes and I'm connecting them. Right now, um, you probably notice it's really quiet there, and that's because I'm using <clears throat> my art side of my brain. And that's the side, um, it's not our language side, it's the side where I'm not using words. I'm just trying to tap into my imagination and creativity. So I'm going to keep going with this, um, but I want you to see how I just started out off with those simple lines and um, I'm thinking shape. And when you think about shapes, just a quick reminder, you know, um, you can make those curvy organic shapes, you could make those polygons, more of those angular shapes, um, you know, do what comes natural to you, create your own style. Um, so again, geometric or organic shapes. And then did you notice how I'm, I'm overlapping? So that's um, something to think about. So remember, uh, if I'm going to do it on the, my pad here. So see if I'm taking a shape and it's separate, I'm going to get more of that flat two-dimensional shape. And if that's what you want to do for your imagination drawing where you don't connect the shapes that's fine um, but if you do want to get it to look more three-dimensional see how I'm getting those shapes to connect and touch and so see something like this you could even turn it into a robot but it, you know I just want to stress that it can look like something, it doesn't have to. It's just what comes out of your imagination and there's no mistakes um, or no right or wrong uh, way to do this. Um, so I hope that helps. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue working on this and you continue working on yours and I'll meet you back here and then we're gonna add either color uh, and value to it. Did you get a good portion of your imagination drawing finished? Great. Okay, so we're gonna now use another element of art. So if you remember, we've used shape and we've also used line. So here's our lines and some of our shapes we used and we overlapped them. Okay, now the next element of art we're gonna use is called value. So thinking of value, I'm going to be using my light value, which will be the white of the paper. Um, I might use a medium value, which would be your pencil, and then that dark value is going to be the marker. Now, if you just wanted to do a pencil drawing, and we just want to remind you, you can still use value um, with just the different pressures you apply with your pencil, meaning if I press really hard on my pencil, I can get a very dark value. 
And if I don't press very hard on my pencil, I can get a light value. And again, the white of the paper is going to be your lightest value. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of that. So see how this is dark. That's my medium and that's my light. And you'll notice when I put those dark shades next to the lighter shades or a dark shade next to the medium shade, my shapes stand out more. Okay, so that's um, something to think about, experiment with, and just discover what that does um, when you're using that grayscale. That's what artists call uh, when you use the white of the paper, the pencil, and the marker, or just the white of the paper and two shades of pencil. That's called grayscale. Okay, um, so I'm going to show you how to use uh, value in that, and then I'll talk a little bit about color. So I'm just going to move this over here. And I'm going to show you. Okay, so mine is, um, I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> it's very abstract, and I don't even feel that I'm completely done with it. I, I might add more things as I go, but this is a good time where I want to start adding some of that idea of the value, the light next to dark or light, medium, dark. Okay, so I'm going to start with my wider marker here, that fine tip marker. And I see a spot right in here. So what I'm going to start to do is, um, remember we talked about edge work. So do you notice how I'm kind of tracing on the inside first? And again, I gotta, really want to turn my paper so I have more control and it's just easier to get those angles. So I kind of trace that inside and then um, I do little sections at a time. So that um, I kind of get rid of that um, scribbly look of the of like doing this. Um, and again, if you like that look, that's fine. You know. See, I'm getting quiet again. You notice. Starting to use that creative side of my brain. So see how I kind of get that smooth uh, shading when I use the marker. Um, and I uh, get the edge, edge work done first. So what I'm looking for is how can I get one of these shapes to pop out. So notice, see I see this little section here. So I'm going to shade that in. And then I'm just going to, again, I'm going to start turning my paper as I go. Now I look at this and I go, wow, that's a good one. I can go right around this and that'll pop those round shapes out. So I'm kind of careful when I'm doing that edge work. And then once I get my edge work finished, then I can just go back at it. Like here, I could even, you know, make stripes there if I like that idea. So I'll show you what that might look like. Um, you know, again, I'm, I think mainly in that light dark pattern, but you know, I might look and go, Hey, I want to add some of those medium shades in there. Um, now look at like, Ooh, how can things get connected? Um, you know, maybe I don't want the dark and the dark to touch. So I add another line in there and then... I can make this dark. So the gr great thing that I love about imagination drawings is it really um, teaches me how to use value. Um, it makes my imagination a lot stronger. I always think of uh, 
imagination, just like a muscle, you know, if, um, if you don't use it, it's not going to be very strong, but if you keep exercising it and using it, it gets stronger and stronger. Um, so this is really fun. And, you know, we talked about the daily sketchbook in the earlier lessons, like this is something that you could do in your daily sketchbook. Um, and that's a lot of fun. So now I'm going to have darks and darks touch, which could be fine. Um, but I think I'm going to leave that. Another thing I want to show you is if you want to work with the pencil. So if something's round, what I like to do is I want to curve as I work and that'll keep that round. And a lot of times what I, I'll do is I'll take my finger and I'll blend with the pencil. See, I can even get this, you know, a little darker in there. And then I blend with the pencil and look, I can even use the eraser as an art tool because see the, how dark that is? I might put a little highlight right on the edge. Um, and if you don't like getting um, pencil on your finger, uh, you know, sometimes I'll wrap my finger in a piece of tissue. Um, so that's kind of the look that you can get with the pencil as well. So see how I can shade it in here. So that would be what I would call my medium value, which is fine to put next to light next to dark you artwork and see now I'm going to blend that and then I'm going to clean my edges with my eraser. And again, I'm just going to keep going with this. You know, where can I get shapes to pop out? I'm going to look over here. Oops. And if, you know, and if you go outside the lines or any of that, don't worry. You can always add another line or shape. Um, you know, I always look what I, another thing I love about art is um, when I do something and I go, oh, I really didn't want to do that. I just, I never look at that as a mistake. Um, I just look at like, how can I solve that problem? Maybe over here, I'm going to add an, an, you know, an extra shape. Okay. So, and then See how to connect on the other side is, you know, another idea. So, and see how I stop talking once I start working. That happens a lot. Again, you know, I'm using that, my imagination and creativity. So it's hard for me to, to talk and draw at the same time. Okay, so... You know, you could keep going uh, like this and, and try to see where you can put your lights and darks to make your artwork stand out. And I just want to show you this other example um, here. So kind of for the medium value in this, I used lines. So that's another option. And color. So when you think of color, um, you know, you can, uh, you know, use the same color, not use the same color. Again, it's drawn from the imagination, but it is up to you. But one thing to keep in mind, if you really want those shapes to stand out, think of color, okay, the same idea as value. See how I've got a light color, I've got a medium color, and a dark color. And the more extreme my lights and darks are, the more my shapes are going to stand out. So even when I choose color, I think value. Um, so that, that has helped me in my artwork so much. So um, I'm hoping it'll help you. Um, and here's another idea. See how these were just kind of out of the red shade? If you want to do different colors, see how the yellow's lighter than that uh, medium green? And then that blue is a lot darker. So even when I'm choosing my colors, I'm thinking, see, this is lighter, this is darker, and this is darker, um, and
and that's a little bit lighter than that. So I've got a light, a medium, and a dark. And I definitely still will use the white of the paper. Well, that's our lesson on drawing from the imagination. Using the elements of art, line, shape, value, and if you'd like, color. Remember, with all my art lessons, you don't just have to finish them in one session. You can do them in parts. And when you're working on your art project, always remember, relax, have fun, and keep creating. And I'm looking forward to seeing you back at school.